Greetings, loyal Anthronians, and welcome back once again to the Dev Build. Alright, before we begin today, a short disclaimer. For those of you who cut the last video and possibly didn't see the pinned comment, I am very sorry for the terrible quality of the video. Long story short, new laptop, not used to it, and there was a Windows update that reverted a graphics setting, which turns out StarMade was running on the onboard graphics, instead of the GeForce driver, which is why the video was just awful. Uh, so I do apologize for that. There was also some sound issues, I'd set up OBS slightly wrong, my microphone was turned down too much, blah 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 blah. Won't happen again, I hope. So the game is running on the GeForce drivers, which has allowed me to up the graphics back to normal. I've actually just noticed a lot of this stuff looks nice, which I don't think I was noticing because I had everything turned down to try and facilitate the recording. Uh, another thing, this is a bit of a test video for a new setup. I'm trying to do a more compact setup because I'm away from my PC, away from my dual monitor support, so I'm also trying to get things where I can set this up and put it away again because I'm not going to have room to have this all permanently set up in the new flat in Berlin when we move. So essentially I'm recording this on a headset so I know the audio quality won't be quite the same as the zoom mic. But I'm hoping it's passable. We're going to find out from this video. Anyway, we're here on the dev build because uh, I showed you some of the small ships that revamped last time. But now I have revamped the Paladine battleship. Obviously is isn't necessarily the final version depending on changes in the dev build. But we'll see how it goes. I thought we'd do a bit of a tour because I did some updates in general within the ship. Uh, change the systems around a bit weapons wise. Uh, it's not... What is it not? <laughs> so it's not a major change, but I guess it is. I spent a few hours on it. Uh, the biggest thing I suppose, what I was saying out there before I tripped over my own words, is I've temporarily at least completely and utterly retired the carrier version, as it... Well, if you've seen my previous series, you know the problems I have with that. The ship's just... When you launch them, they'll fly away and never come back and never reload. It's just not worth the hassle. And I figured I also don't want to have to do all the revamping to the other shit that I did to this one. So if I ever do bring the carrier variant back, I'm going to convert this uh, into the carrier rather than do the updates to the carrier that I did to this, because it would be quicker. Anyway, inside we did some visual stuff. Uh, before we do that, though, seriously, look at those textures. Oh, okay. So I've added some display things about the play. I'm going to zoom in. I know I usually do third person, but there we go. So I've got explanations on all the doors and stuff to where everything is. Just so you can explain how you're getting around a little bit better. So obviously we're up here on the bridge just now, but let us call the elevator. The, ele the, the elevator. I think I was trying to say elevator to be funny and just tripped over my words again. It's going well. Uh, right, so that should be it behind So the doors are now automatic. Look, yay. I'm just talking on about that. And get, just assume all the doors are automatic unless they don't want to be in all my ships now. So head back down to deck two. There we go. Okay, so the first major change you'll see here is this force field to protect the now automatic airlock, obviously. So it's like a hand scanner set up, so this doesn't always have to be closed or anything. Oh, there's a little bit of exposed piping there. Disappointing. Anyway, um, so by default that will be turned off, I think, but anything you leave the ship unattended, you want to bring that force feed up so people can't just walk in. So you can go through the airlock and get out this way. There we go. Now you see on the way back in, the lights still change to represent whether the airlock is sealed or not, which is quite cool. I enjoyed doing that one. Let's just seal that just now for fun. Uh, the refectory will not be affected, I don't believe. No, I don't think it changed anything in here. So still the refectory and meeting room, which is across. I'll just do a proper tour since not everyone will have seen this. This is the captain's quarters. So this nice big place with its own shower, own little separated bathroom, cubicle area, and a nice big bed. Do So these aren't automatic. These are just done with hand scanners for security reasons. See up here you got the little display box to tell you that if you walk through, you get to the crew bunks and access to deck 3, because this is deck 2, and the elevator for deck 4, which will take you to the bridge where we came from, so we'll skip that just now. So we'll head through. So this is the remainder of deck 2, which has the crew bunks. Just need to show you the one. They're all mirrored of each other, but decent size. I like to have everything quite sizable. 
So that's where the crew get to hang out with an not on duty. And as you see here, there's the display module for going the other way. So say if you walk through, you get to the airlock, refectory, and captain's quarters, and the elevator for deck 4 bridge. So these are the ramps for deck 3, which takes you to the gym and medical bay. So we'll mosey on up here. So those who haven't seen it, uh, the Anthronians like to hit the gym, in case you haven't seen my Instagram. <laughs> Shameless self-plug. So yeah, we've got the nice big gym area for all the Anthronians to keep themselves in fighting condition, and or surely for ego's sake. Little mirror area here so you can do some sweet dumbbell curls. If only you had mirrored blocks though. <laughs> Medical bay over here for when you inevitably hurt yourself trying to work out that heavily when you're in your 30s. <clears throat> Not talking about anyone in particular there. And just a little sort of rest and relaxation area with a huge window. Bit interesting for a battleship, I know, but hey. So you can sort of observe the open deck outside and see the guns in action if you would so choose. Let us head back down to deck two, which will then get the elevator down to deck one. I did toy with ripping out the two separate elevators and finally making one big long elevator and taking the different decks, but the way everything's laid out, it's. Unless that elevator can go down and then along and then down, it's. Uh, not going to work, so we're sort of stuck with that. So right here, it tells you the elevator is to deck one, main engineering and transporter room, so we'll just call the elevator. It may add some sort of method for knowing whether the elevator is up or not. Some sort of trigger that turns on a light, perhaps, would be simple enough. Usually when I'm playing the game, obviously I have the HUD on, and you can actually just see the little thing come up, so I've never really thought about it just there. So head through. I uh, moved this button up one. I'd mistimed that before. Mistimed? Misplaced. Mist misplaced the button originally. It was lower down. So I had to deck one. Elevator shafts are pretty dark. Hmm. Oh well. It is what it is. No, it's not. That totally needs a light. Anyway. So head into main engineering. So over here we have the bombard switch, which can now be attached to the new main cannon, which we'll talk about when we get back to the bridge. Um, that's really only if you're taking on a station or something and just can't be bothered pressing the button over and over again. You can just set that to keep firing itself. This is the red alert system, that you shouldn't touch, ever, apart from, from the bridge, using the remote buttons. Uh, since we're in here, we can actually fire all the spinning stuff up to the reactor heatsink and the main reactor for RP reasons of course. In reality obviously these spinning things activate blinking lights and the spinning radar dish on the outside which we can look at. And then just all sorts of computer banks and all that business. I imagine that's some sort of warp core that sort of idea and then obviously the transporter room with its decontamination procedures so you have to stay in here when you're beamed over. Uh, those have seen the ship before know most of these bits, but it's all working now, there's no missing chunks, etc. And again, more explanations as you go around the place how to find stuff. So it tells you deck 2, crew bunks, factory, and airlock. So we'll head back up now. But obviously, I haven't just done this tour without the hot on. I'm definitely thinking I need another couple of lights in the elevator shafts. But live and learn. So this isn't the final version, I just wanted to really going to show for where it's heading. Uh, the next major updates I'm doing to will mostly be aesthetic from this point on, short of any major changes to the systems from this version of the dev build. Because um, some of the areas are quite plain. Uh, it's about time to start working on that. But as you know, because I'm all about every video, I want to get my fleet up and ready with the new systems before I start worrying about things like that. I also have a new super secret project that I'm going to be starting after the weapons update comes out, but don't tell anyone. Okay, so back at the bridge. Gotta go ahead and turn the hot on for reasons. And we'll get back in the core. And there we are. So it's weapon systems. Got all the turrets, obviously. We now have a 900 block dual missile launcher with six missiles. And a 3620 main gun beam computer, which is just the standard beam, so it does that kind of stick onto the target thing. There's your bombard switch, red alert system, etc. And pretty much that is it. It's just a few weapons, but they're pretty big. 
Uh, just gonna zoom out a little bit here just to show you some of the stuff. There's a station I was target practicing on earlier. <laughs> so you blinking lights, and I think nope, the spinning thing has went off. Give me a second. I'm going to find a way to stop this stuff from turning itself off, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, let's say uh, nope it did it again why are you not spinning spinning now uh, there's nothing to do with no there we go maybe just I'm not here anyway there we go so you're just spinning bits and you're blinking lights and for those who haven't seen the ship before, I'll show you the red alert system. If it decides to work. I'm pressing the bomb broad switch. Oh, that should be red alert. Why is it not working? Oh, some of it is. Huh. Uh, okay, just some sort of graphical error. <laughs> so that's red alert toggled on. So it toggles off the lights, um, the white ones anyway, and then turns on all the red ones. And the bridge, all the crew areas. I think I even did it in the bunks. Let's find out. Yes, I did. So, you know, everyone on the ship is very well aware that it's a red alert status. I just I like doing little things like that. I'm slowly gonna get better at doing aesthetics and RP stuff over time, but yeah, there we go. Ah, I was already pressed. Alright, so that's red alert on. And fire the main beams. Oh yeah. So they can drain down shields pretty fast. And then obviously these would loop if they were actually aimed at something, but there's your missiles. Uh, and that's pretty much all the ship does on its own. So the pretty big missiles, pretty big beam, take the shields down, blow big holes in it. Rather simple. Uh, but I suppose the main trick would be firing the turrets and everything. So let's go find a target just so we can do that for fun. Because it's quite the light show. And I like it. Oh yeah, firing the main gun. Yes! Oh, I enjoyed that. A little bit too much. So I'm just going to stay here all mysteriously shadowed and red alert and hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed what I've been doing with the ship so far. Hope this video is of much better video quality than the last one. If my problems have been sorted out, I should hope. And I hope the audio was okay because the headset's a lot easier for a quick setup. And not sure what I'll be doing next time, but hopefully we'll be back on server, because apart from updating a few things on the stations, but it's more boring things like automatic doors, etc, etc, and I'm probably going to take out that auto gravity from Fort William, because, ugh, I just keep crashing into it. But that's not really interesting enough for a video, so we're doing those things, then we're back on server, waiting for the final version of the dev build, so I can finalize all the little tweaks, and then get them onto the live servers, and get on with some stuff and some things. But as I said, hope you enjoyed the video for what it was, and I'll see you next time, whenever that is. I've been Captain Anthros, and you're dismissed. <laughs>